Hello, everyone. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. In fact, I'm so excited to welcome you to yet another promising edition of our um, Extra and Speed Live. Well, before we kickstart the session, let's confirm that we are good to go this morning. That is, I would like to know if you can see my screen and hear my voice clearly. So if you can do this, please type in hi in the comment section as this will help me confirm that we are good to go this morning. So let's see what we have here. I would like to see some feedback, please. Let's see. I'm trying to load up my comment box and let's see what it's going on here all right hold on a second please okay oh unfortunately i my charts are not loading up i hope this will be resolved before the end of the session so i wouldn't be able to see if we are good to go or not but anyways um i just hope things are quite all right over there um give me a moment please let me do some quick confirmations Okay, so I'm just trying to confirm if we are good to go. And um, I hope I get some feedback. So I'll just run through as we go on. And if there are any issues, I will do the necessary adjustment. So um, on this note, I welcome you all to... Okay, I just got a confirmation now that I'm good. So um, on this note, I welcome you to another promising edition of the x Speed Live and my name is Sharif Daramola. And for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host as we take a new look at the financial market. So um, for this week so far, we have been monitoring four major assets for this week, uh, which includes the US Tech 100, the US All Sports, the USD JPY, and of course, the XAU USD, popularly known as the gold spot so today we are going to be taking a fresh new look at it review the current positions we have and see how we can strategically position our head ahead of ourselves ahead of the new york session now for those who are joining us for the first time you are highly welcome on board glad to have you around here with us and you might be asking what is it that we are doing here well as a technical trader uh, we gather here as a community in anticipation of the New York session where we come to review our existing positions if we have any running and of course strategically place ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential opportunities during the New York session. 
So this happens on a daily basis, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time. So I encourage you to stay tuned in and be part of this addition to the end as, um, as you don't want to be missing out on the interesting and insightful ideas we shall be dishing out during this time. And of course, I encourage you to be part of our subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us, the better you get in understanding how this works and eventually be able to use the information you have gathered here to make your own independent trading decisions. So once again, I welcome you all on board. Now, with that being said here, we shall be diving right into the business. And as usual, the first thing we normally do is to run through the economic calendar to see what majority in the market will be looking forward to has a factor that will be inciting some uh, momentum in price action. And of course, we all know how important these fundamental factors are as they come and manifest on the chart in technical patterns and price movement. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information that can make us position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize any potential move prior, during, and even after this event. Now, for today, as usual, we are going to be looking at high-impact events from the economies that affect the assets on our watch list, which include the Japanese and, of course, the United States. And on the economic calendar for today, Tuesday, September 19th, we do not have any high-impact events, so I took it a step further to include medium-impact events so that we can have a sense of expectations on what people are looking forward to and how they are actually anticipating this event. Now, the first one here is coming in about an hour or two from now, and that is the building permit month on month for the, for the month of August. Now, for those who don't know, the build permit re is released by the US Census Bureau at the Department of Commerce. And this index shows the number of permits for new construction projects and of course, it implies the movement of corporate investment here by giving us an indication of the L situation of that sector. Generally speaking, a high reading, a growing number of permits in, incites um, a positive signal for the U.S. economy. And if we look at the previous data here, it came in at 1.443 million. And the... Projection for by the economics for the month of August is projected at 1.445 million. So they are expecting, based on what we have on ground, that there is a little bit of contraction. So we are going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be and what the is it going to be just as expected, below expectations, or even beyond expectations. Then we also have the housing stats index for the month of August. And this one here is also released by the same department. And of course, it is an indicator that tracks how many new single family homes or buildings were constructed. And of course, the data here indicates movement of the housing market and generally a high reading anticipate positive or bullishness for the US dollar. Now, the previous data here came in at 1.452 million, and economists are projecting 1.44, which is a little bit on the lower side compared to the previous month. So we're still going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be. Then, because we are monitoring the USD-JPY pair, we are also going to be looking forward to some medium-impact data coming in from the Japanese economy. And we have the exports year-on-year, -year, imports, and of course, the merchandise trade balance total, which of course is a positive value showing the trade surplus while a negative value shows a trade deficit. So we are going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be here. And if a steady demand in exchange for Japanese export is seen, then that will turn into a positive scenario for that economy. Now look at the previous data here. We have minus 78.7 billion Japanese yen compared to economist projection of minus 
1.1 billion. So it shows that the, um, there is a contraction there. And these are not good figures for the Japanese economy. So we want to see how the market will be anticipating this event. And of course, as technical traders, we shall be diving right into the chart, look at things from the technical standpoint to identify structures and patterns that will help us position ourselves ahead of this event. So with that being said here, let's dive right into the chart. And uh oh, I just realized now that um, my network isn't going. Can you see my screen? <laughs> Of unfortunately, I can't follow up with you, so let me just do the necessary adjustment here and let's see how I can make things better. Give me a moment, please. All right, I just hope that um, you can see my screen and um, hear my voice clearly. Let me just do some little confirmation here before we jump right in. Okay, I think um, I'm on, right? So let me just go ahead with um, my explanations here. So give me a moment, please. All right. So um, in preparation for today's trading session, I have conducted a comprehensive analysis on all of the assets on our watch list. And I'm so excited to share with you my findings and how we are going to be managing our positions on these assets. So as usual, the first asset we are going to be taking on this morning So the first asset we are going to be taking on this morning is the U.S. oil spot. And in fact, in the last 24 hours, we've been doing pretty well as price has moved as expected as we kept on buying. And currently, we have a minimum of three positions running in profit right now. Now, before we go into the details of what our expectations is looking like and how um, what we are going to be doing today, I would like us to run through the current market structure from an holistic standpoint. Let's look at things from that perspective and see how we are going to be managing our trades. And of course, for those who are joining us for the first time, this will be an opportunity to be on the same page with us. Now, scaling up into the higher time frame, I think we started from the four hours time frame yesterday. And on the four hours time frame, we were able to identify a simple setup on this chart. So this is what we did here. So after taking into consideration the nature of price action since the second week or third week of the month of August, it is quite clear that price action has been on a strong bullish momentum. And to emphasize this, we connected the series of low higher lows here, which for the give us an insight into how strong the buyers are in this market. And you know how we do it in this community. When price action remains above our ascending trend line, we will continue to look out for patterns and structures that will support the idea of buying. And we are not going to be considering selling unless price breaks down this ascending trend line. Now, our center of focus for this week was um, we zoomed in to look at how price has been reacting since the beginning of this month. And of course, it's quite clear that price still remained very bullish. And we had our key level situated at the $90 area, a very strong psychological area 
considering the round figure of that price. And of course, we agreed here at the beginning of the week that we will continue to look out for buying opportunity if price remains above the structure. Now, while we scaled down into the lower time frame, we went to look forward to see how market participant will be reacting to that zone between the one the $90.50 level and the $90 area to see how to position ourselves for this week. Now, we begin to see things more clearly on the psychology of participants in this market after noticing how they behaved around the $90 area. And one of the things we observed here yesterday was the fact that price was confined within the range that's between the $90.50 level and our key level situated at the $90 area. And of course, you know how we do it in this community. Whenever we have this kind of flag channel, it emphasizes the indecision in the market as we want to exercise patience, waiting for a signal to come, either in the form of a breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell. Now, with the situation we had here, we saw price break out of that, of that resistant line prior to our live session yesterday, which further um, incited the idea that we should be looking out for buying opportunities and that the only reason why we are going to be selling is for price to break down retest the $90 area, then we can join the bearish move, which of course never happened. And instead, we saw our price continue to break out that resistant line at the $90.50 level, which further emphasized the strength of the buyers here. And since that moment, we have been buying. And remember, we also added one more level at the $90.80 level, where we said we shall be adding more positions at the breakout retest of that area so at this point in time for those who are taking advantage of these opportunities um, the first position right now if you still have a buy position running is currently running with about 76 pips in profit while the second position is currently running with about 45 pips in profit so we have roughly of over 100 pips um, to have been caught here since the beginning of the week which is not bad at all considering the fact that the week is still very heavy so congratulations to everyone who has been part of this profitable journey now with the wealth with this being said right now we do want to be secure in our positions right now as you all know whenever price moves significantly well in our favor we want to be moving our stop losses accordingly and from the current structure here i'm of the opinion that anywhere around this second entry that is around the $90.80 level seems most appropriate to move all stop losses to. And remember that it is advisable to give enough room for price action to breathe just so, so that we can capture all the volatility that could happen around this area before the trend continuation happens. So now with a well-secured position at this point, what is going to be our next line of action? How do we intend to manage these positions? Now with the way things are going right now, as price continues to find higher highs and higher lows, I'm of the opinion that we will continue to look out for more buying opportunities. And in fact, today I identified another level around the $91.15 level, which was the highest point as of this morning when I was trying to decipher what the next line of action would be. And in that regard, I was looking out for more opportunities to buy above that level. And of course, we can see what has happened right now. We have a breakout. Price appears to have come back to retest the structure and it's likely that price will continue to the upside. Now, if selling pressure resumes here that pushes price to the downside, this will still not negate the idea of buying this asset. As you all know, we have an ascending trend line, which we have been using, sorry, I would like to highlight that so that we can see this clearly. So, which we have been using to guide our trading decisions for the last couple of weeks now. Now, as long as price remains above that trend line, we will feel comfortable in our buy position. So if any selling pressure comes in here, it could come in and then remember we have a bus stop here, the ascending trend line, where the appearance of buy pressure here could still incite more buying opportunities. 
However, if price does not drop into that area and instead it continues to climb new highs, then we want to be positioning ourselves above the $91.50 level to capitalize on more buying opportunities. This is the highest point price has been for this week, so we do want to be marking out these levels on our chart as we will be needing it as a reference point to guide an uptrend continuation. So let's have another level around that area. Now there are two ways to which we can capitalize on this move. Now the first one is for those of us who have been part of this profitable journey since the beginning of this week, that is if you have been buying, you have two positions running in profit right now, then we can afford to leverage on the profit we have made so far this week to test waters above the $91.50 level. So in that regard, we want to be having a buy stop order above this structure so that we can capitalize on that move. However, if you are new with us, that is, this is your first time taking a position with us and you missed out on the opportunities we had, then I will be advising you to remain patient, wait for the breakout, retest on the lower time frame to capitalize on that uptrend continuation. So that is how we are going to be buying the US all spot for today. So we do want to be marking out those levels on our chart as we will be needing them as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions. However, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunity in the market, we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers too. And this is how we've always been doing in this community. We also want to keep tabs with the potentials that sellers could push price in their favor too as well. And if we look at what has been going on within this area around the $91.50 area, and of course the $91.15 zone, you will see how this area had been a strong selling niche in this market. Now, if this continues like this and buyers are finding it difficult to break out of the $91.50 zone, then there are chances that sellers could come in to push price to the downside. And if that is going to be the case, what is it that we are going to be seeing on this chart that will make us feel confident selling the US all spots? Now, personally, I would love price to break down the $90.80 level, a level which shares a beautiful confluence with that ascending trend line. Now, if price breaks down the $90.80 level, price would have broken out of that ascending trend line, which will be a sign that the ascending trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to negate that bearish attempt. Now, to sell here, I would want to see price slice through the $90.80 level. Remember, we are not getting too excited here as we would need some confirmations to happen before we jump into a position. Remember, this market has been on a strong bullish momentum in the last couple of weeks, a couple of months, in fact. And if price breaks down the trend line, it could still turn out to be a false breakdown. So we will need it to be a true breakdown. And to do that, as soon as we cite the breakdown of that trend line, we scale down into our lower time frame where we shall be looking out for patterns and structures that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above that ascending trend line. And this will reflect on the chart as continued selling pressure, leading into a situation where we will be looking to sell when we notice this, then a further breakdown of this major ascending trend line and the $90.50 level will be welcoming more selling opportunities. And if price action continues to drop further, then a breakdown of the one th of the $90 level will be welcoming more selling opportunities. So let's keep our options open so we have a center of focus right now, and that is between the $91.50 area and of course the $90.80 area we are depending on how price reacts to this zone will determine what our next line of action will be. So we are looking forward to buying opportunities above the $91.15 level, maximizing the potentials at a further breakout of the $91.50 area. But if price drops below the $90.80 level, which shares a beautiful confluence with that ascending trend line, then we shall be looking out for selling opportunities. So this is my view here on the US all spot for today. I do hope I made myself very clear. Unfortunately, I don't have um, 
I don't have a comment box here to monitor your thoughts. But I hope I was able to do justice to this one. And in fact, you do want to be marking out those levels on your chart. So I will be giving some 10 to 15 seconds so that you can quickly um, mark out those levels and let's move on to the next financial assets on our watch list. All right, all right. So I hope that with a time frame, we are able to mark out these levels on your charts. And so let's see how the market will react to these levels going forward. So with that being said, let's move right into the next asset on our watch list. So the next financial asset on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. Now on the NASDAQ, we have a situation where uh, market, market has been a little bit choppy since the beginning of this week as um, investors, traders and um, Key market players are refraining from taking large positions ahead of this week's all-important central bank meeting. So as a result of this, there is an indecision in this market. As you will see, price has been trapped within a range. In fact, the range has expanded a little further from where we identified yesterday into the 15,270 and the 15,150 to further emphasize the level of indecision in this market though we have a buy position running at this point in time and um, let's see how that is going to go but before we go into the details of what we are going to be doing today um, for the sake of those who are not part of our live session yesterday let's run through um, the the higher time frame let's have an holistic perspective into what is going on in this market then we can come back into the lower time frame to project what to look out for now the first and first here was the daily time frame we looked at the daily time frame here yesterday and in fact we saw very interesting uh, market sentiment in this market now the first thing we saw here at the beginning of the week was um, the fact that price has been on a strong bullish momentum then we went further to connect the series of higher lows here giving us a beautiful ascending trend line which further emphasized the strength of the buyers in this market and as long as price remains above our said trend line, we continue to look out for buying opportunities. Now, when we zoom into this current structure and looking at what has been going on since the month of June, we were able to spot a key level at the 15,150. Now, the reason why we have this level here is simply because of how this area has been a key player. It has played a major role in determining the direction of price action. Now, if we go to as far back as the month of June, we saw how this level was initially a selling niche. We saw what happened here. It was a selling niche at some point before we finally saw the breakout of the structure here. Fast forward into the month of August, we saw it. We saw the breakdown. We saw a false breakout. Then since the breakout of the structure happened at the end of last month's trading session, since that moment, throughout the course of this month, price had remained above the 15,150 to further emphasize the strength of the buyers around this area. Now, something, one more thing that makes this level more intriguing is the fact that it also shares a beautiful confluence with that ascending trend line. Now, the question going into the new week, into this week, was that. Will price respect that ascending trend line one more time, just like it has been doing around the 15,150 to insight and uptrend continuation? Or are we going to be seeing a scenario where both the ascending trend line and the 15,150 will be broken to the downside to insight a sell-off? 
Now, for us to understand what is really going on here, we needed to scale down into the lower time frame where, of course, we want to see our market participants will be reacting into that zone just right above our key level. Now, when we scale down into the one hour time frame, we begin to see things clearly. And of course, um, let me load this up quickly. I'm not sure why this is slowing up right now. All right, so we have it right here. So at the beginning of the week, we initially had a range that was between the 15,233 and the 15,195, but we saw price break down that support line, extending that range into the 15,150. Now, remember yesterday we said that we are going to be buying anywhere above the 15,233, and if you had followed this instruction, you should be having a buy position running at this point in time. So we will continue to hope that this bullish momentum will continue to find higher highs and higher lows here. And in fact, to further maximize the hop trend continuation, we also have another level that we will be marking out here at the 15,270. So you do want to be marking out this level too as well on your chart. That's the 15,270 level. As you will see here, hold on a second, I think that was a typographical error. All right, so we have the 15,270 marked out on our chart as we shall be using that level to capitalize on an uptrend continuation. So if price action continues to climb higher highs, a breakout of the 15,270 will be welcoming more buying opportunities in this market. So we'll continue to hold on to a bullish bias here. And in fact, we have higher lows here, though we are yet to see a higher high. This is the lowest point price has got into this week. And we saw a higher low here around the 15,195. Now, if we bring out our line chart to connect the series of higher lows here, we should be having an appropriate ascending trend line that we shall be using to guide our trading decision going forward. And of course, you know that as long as price remains above this ascending trend line, we shall feel comfortable in our buy positions and look out for more opportunities to capitalize on this move. So in as much as we're looking out for more buying opportunities here, um, the breakdown of that ascending trend line will likely be inciting some selling opportunities. And the fact that that level also shares a confluence with that 15,233 makes this whole structure more interesting. So what we're we going to be seeing here to sell is price breaking down the 15,233. And in fact, if you look at the structure since last week, Friday, we saw how this level has been a strong selling niche. And this is more reason why we will need a breakout of that structure to confirm that buyers will be taking over this market. So with that selling pressure here, let's see if price will continue to selling pressure will continue to persist below the 15,270. And if it does, a breakdown, then retest of structure on our lower time frame will be all we need to capitalize on a bearish move. And in fact, we have multiple levels here where we can use to maximize the potential of this bearish move if price action continues to break down this level. So we have the 15,195. And we also have the 15,150. So these are my views here on the US Tech 100. Simple setup. And you can see how important both the ascending trend line and the 15,233 zone is will play a major role in determining what our next line of action will be for today. So you do want to be marking out this level so that we can use it as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions. So I will be taking the next 10 seconds to allow us mark out these levels in our charts while we get prepared for the next financial assets on our watch list.
all right all right so i hope we were able to mark out those levels on our chart so we shall be moving right into the next financial assets on our watch list So the next asset on our watch list is my favorite, and that is the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Spot. And in fact, since the beginning of this week, we have been doing very, very well on this asset. As right now, uh, you should be having a minimum of two positions running. Do I have three running at this point in time? But you should have a minimum of three positions running in profit. Now, let's run through this current structure to see what really went on yesterday and what led to the idea that we will continue to buy this asset. Now, on the one hour time frame, this is what we saw here. Hold on a second. Let's go back to as far as the four hours time frame where we'll see things from an holistic standpoint. I'm not sure why this is not loading up. Okay, good. So it took quite a while anyways, but thank goodness it loaded up. <laughs> so um, on the four hours time frame, we saw a crucial structure in this market where since month of July, price had continued to find lower highs. And as a result of this lower highs, we had a couple of descended trend line, which you will see here. And of course, was serving as a major parameters that will be guiding our decisions for this week. Now, one thing interesting is going on in this market. Now, despite the appearance of lower highs in this market, you will see that the inability of price action to find a lower low has negated the potentials of the sellers in this market. Now, look at the lowest point price action has been in the last couple of months. We have the 1,885, and the next attempt by the sellers to break through um, and find lower low was a sharp rejection by the buyers at the 1,900 area, giving us a higher low to work with. And of course, whenever we've noticed higher low in the, on the chart, it's a sign that buyers are gradually gaining momentum behind the scenes. And with this observation, we, we suspected that we might likely be seeing the breakout of one of this descending trend line and if price will break out of that descending trend line we will be getting ready to buy and to help us position ourselves ahead of this week's trading session we identified the 1925 level which is serving as our key level for this week and that a breakout retest of that structure will be all we need to capitalize on a bullish momentum and in fact, we saw what happened here yesterday. We saw the breakout of the of both the 1925 and that ascend, descending trend line. We saw the retest of structure and boom, since that moment, we have been buying this asset. So let me scale back down into the one hour time frame where we will see things more clearly. And in fact, on the one hour time frame was where we were able to identify multiple levels that we said we will be using to guide our independent trading decisions for this week. Now, we saw what happened here yesterday. We saw price cut within a range that is between the 1,930 and the 1,950 50 cent level. Now, in addition to that was this ascending trend line, which, of course, we agreed here yesterday that if price continues to trade above the ascending trend line, we feel comfortable in our buy positions. And that the only condition that will make us want to sell is for price dropping below the descending trend line, which, of course, never happened. Now, during our live session yesterday, we acknowledged the $1,927.50 level, if you remember vividly. We acknowledge this level and we said a breakout retest will be welcome in buying opportunity. And this was exactly what happened. About a couple of hours into the New York session, we saw the breakout retest of that structure. And since that moment, price action had continued to find higher highs and higher lows. And for those who took advantage of this one, if you still have your buy position running right now, you should be currently running with over 80 pips in profits. 
and if you are taking advantage of the second position now you will be running with about 54 pips in profit so we have over 120 pips as at the first two days of the week which is not bad to start the week with congratulations to you if you are taking advantage of this opportunity and you know how we do it the next thing we want to be doing right now is to ensure that we secure this current positions now to secure this current positions we are going to be moving our stop losses right now to an area around the second entry which is just around the 1930 dollar 50 cent level so around that area seems most appropriate to secure our current buy position remember we want to be given enough room for price action to breathe now with a well secured position for today what is going to be our next line of action ahead of the new york session how are we going to continue buying and if we are what is it that we want to see that will make us buy how are we going to be getting ready to sell and if we are what is it that we're going to be seeing that will make us sell now the first thing i observed this morning was the 1934 which happens to be the highest point as at the time I analyzed this market as you will see we saw selling pressure around this area during the early hours of today's trading session and as a result of this I was looking forward to another breakout of the structure to capitalize and maximize the potential of that bullish move and of course I have my buy position triggered right now and if you had deemed it fit to take advantage of that opportunity at that juncture kudos to you for being on standby to capitalize on that move However, if you had missed out on that opportunity, well, I will be advising you to exercise patience as you want to see price come back, retest the structure with some buy pressure around this area to join the uptrend continuation. And in fact, price could even come to as far as retesting this ascending trend line, which we've agreed here that we are going to be using to guide our decisions for this week. So price could even come into that area by pressure, then we continue the uptrend scenario. So this is how we are going to be buying the XAUS today. Anywhere above the 1934 seems most appropriate for us to capitalize on that uptrend continuation. However, if price continues to drop and then we cite a situation where price breaks down that ascending trend line, then we want to be getting ready to sell. And in fact, I would like to see a breakdown happen, retest of structure confirming that truly buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the 1934 for me to join the bearish move to the downside. And in fact, we have multiple levels such as the $1,930.50 level, we have the $1,000. $927.50 and of course we have the $1,925 and the $1,922.50 area all of which we can use to maximize that bearish momentum if price continues to break further to the downside. But I doubt this will happen as I still think that this ascending trend line still has the capacity to continue to push price to the upside but if it does happen that the ascending trend line is breached then let us get ready to be part of a bearish move here so these are my views here on the XAUSD so we have a simple setup here where our center of focus is basically between the 1934 and the 50 area so you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart and of course the ascending trend line as we shall be using them to guide our independent trading decisions for today so i will be given the next 10 seconds to allow you mark out these levels on your charts uh, before we move on to the next financial assets on our watch list <laughs> So I do hope we've marked out these levels on our charts. So I will just move on to the next asset on our watch list, which of course is going to be the last asset we are going to be monitoring for this week.
so the next asset on our watch list for today is the USD JPY and what an interesting scenario we have here since the beginning of the week as you will see that this market has been constantly range bound in the last 24 hours as both buyers and sellers are still struggling to um, make a statement in this particular market and of course i'm not surprised at this scenario here considering the fact that we're looking forward to this all-important central bank meeting coming up um, much more later this week now both economies here are going to be witnessing economic events interest rate decisions tomorrow wednesday the u.s economy will be will be featuring their U their rates decisions and on friday the japanese economy will be featuring its own interest rate decision so you can see how important this event is for this particular market and as a result of this we have this old choppy situation where price has been ranging between the 147.890 and the 147.600 to further emphasize the level of uncertainty in this market now with the situation we have here remember during our live session yesterday we said here that we were going to be buying above the 147.720 that is a breakout and retest of that structure to capitalize on that move and in fact we had a buy position trigger during the early hours of today as we saw price moved about 17 pips in our favor before this bearish momentum came in to take us out of that position and of course if you had moved your stop losses accordingly um, you must have been taken out with a worst case scenario break even on this one but with the way things are going here i still think that price will still continue to the upside now why have i said so well there are a lot of parameters here that um, are screaming buy 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 but I would like to share with you what we saw on the four hours time frame which makes it very promising to look for buying opportunities in this market now on the four hours time frame we had we identified an uptrend continuation pattern if you remember so i will do a visual representation so you can see what i'm talking about so following the impulsive move that brought us into this juncture since the beginning of this month we can see an horizontal resistance line here along the 147.950 and remember that this level was our key level for this week and you know how we use our key levels in this community when price breaks out of the key level then we'll be looking out for buying opportunities but if price remains below the key level with persistent selling pressure then we want to be getting ready to sell so we had a an ascending triangle which from a technical standpoint is considered as a, a strong uptrend continuation pattern and of course when we see this kind of pattern on the chart it's a clear sign that buyers are trying to break through this resistance level and in fact with this comes with higher lows as you will see here and we know that at some point in time this ceiling will cave in to incite a final breakout of this structure so we're looking forward to the breakout of the 147.950 to confirm this uptrend continuation pattern so that we can join the uptrend move now you can see why i said this structure here on this chart is screaming bullish however in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunity here we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers as we have seen how the 147.950 area had been a strong barrier for buyers since the beginning of this month and if the scenario persists we could see a situation where this ascending trend line so this trend line here has been supporting a bullish momentum since the beginning of this month and if it so happens that this trend line is broken to the downside this will be the first time price will be breaking down that structure mm -hmm. and in fact a signal that we might likely be seeing a momentum shift now a breakdown retest of the structure is all we need to capitalize on the bearish move of course we don't know how far that will go but we will be projecting the 145 area considering the round figure of that level as an area to have a tp target 
But one thing for sure here is that if we are going to be selling, let's ensure that we are on standby to move our stop losses accordingly to secure the current position as I still think that the current market structure here is projecting a bullish sentiment. Now, with the information we have gathered here on the four hours time frame, so I would like us to go back down into the one hour time frame to see how market participant has been reacting to that zone just right below the 147.950. And we're also going to be talking about how price action has been rejecting that ascending trend line as you respect and sorry that ascending trend line as you will see we've been seen noticing by pressure around that ascending trend line since the beginning of the week to further emphasize the strength of the buyers here now scaling down into the one hour time frame we were able to spot a range which i showed you earlier and besides that range there is something interesting i would like to let you know now, if you look at what has been going on here since the beginning of the week, you would observe that that area between the 147.650 and the 147.550 have been a buying niche since the beginning of this week. As you will see that as soon as price gets into the zone, sellers have always struggled to break through the 147.600 zone and even break down that ascending trend line. So the continued buy pressure here, and if you look at the nature of the week of those candles, it shows, gives us a sign that sellers were, were unable to settle below the 147.600 at, at no point in time. Now, for me personally, I'm of the opinion that buyers are still present in this market, so I will be still be looking out for more opportunities to buy above the 147.720. And if price continues to climb to find new highs, then I will be looking out for more opportunities at the breakout of the 147.890 and the 147.950. Remember, this zone is the resistant line of that uptrend continuation pattern we identified on the higher time frame. So this is how I am projecting and positioning myself for buying opportunity on the USD JPY. So we are looking at anywhere above the 147.420 and in fact you can see how it coincidentally shares a confluence with that ascending trend line. So will price respect that trend line one more time to push an uptrend? Let's see how the market would react to the zone. So mark out those levels and let's look out for more buying opportunities at this point in time. However, if at any point price drops and breaks down the 147.600 significantly well, then we shall be looking out for selling opportunities. Now, look at how that area has been. So, I will need price to take out all the buy positions around the 147.600 zone for me to feel confident selling the USDJPY. So, I would like to see something like a slice through retest of structure then we want to be joining that decline all the way to the downside however we could still have an opportunity to join before the breakdown of structure if we can notice lower highs and lower lows but i will feel very comf comfortable below the 147.600 taking out all the buy positions retest of structure then we can join that decline to the downside so this is where our center of focus is going to be for today. So you do want to be marking out this level. So we shall be around the 147.720 and the 147.600. And please don't forget to mark out that ascending trend line as it is going to be playing a major role in determining where price will be heading to for this week. So let's see how the market will react. And of course, we shall be back here tomorrow to review how well this asset has been doing so um it's on this note i would like to round the cut round off right now and unfortunately i'm not able to monitor your feedbacks in the comment section due to my inability to load the comment box but i hope by tomorrow things will be a little bit more better but from what we've done so far i'm of the opinion that i have made it a little bit more comprehensive for us to capitalize on any potential move so for today we were able to attend to four major financial assets which includes the us all spot 
the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. We also attended to the XAUUSD, popularly known as the Gold Spot, and of course the USD JPY, and all of which we were able to identify simple setups using parameters such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to understand the psychology behind the price movement, and of course, use the information to position ourselves ahead of the New York session. So I encourage us all to remain very patient. Let's allow our structures to mature before we jump into a position. And mind you, the market is very choppy um, in the last 24 hours, and this is because of the event we are looking forward to. And this kind of environment has a tendency of inciting compulsive trading behaviors. So let's be mindful of this. Mark out your levels on your chart. Wait for price to run through your levels. Fulfill them and then join any position at that point. For those who joined us for the first time, I do hope you are able to gain one or two things today. And um, I look forward to seeing more of you. And I trust me, the more time you spend with us, the better you get in understanding how this works and eventually be able to use the information you have gathered here to make your own independent trading decisions. So on this note, I look forward to seeing more of you tomorrow. Um, same time, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, as we come back here again to review how well this asset has been doing and at the same time, get ready for tomorrow's trading session, which promises to be a, um, an interesting one considering the U.S. Fed interest rate decision everyone in the market is looking forward to. So you don't want to miss out on our sessions tomorrow. And on this note, I wish you best of luck and do have a wonderful and beautiful evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>